Welcome to the Wellness for Women show, where we talk about life, weight loss and everything in between. I'm Faye Caseman, founder of the AAA Way Life and Weight Loss Program, and I'm here to help you put together the pieces of life and weight loss for one last time. This is an episode of the Wellness for Women show, filmed live in the free Facebook group. But what am I covering tonight? I am covering how to stop overeating, the five E's of eating. Uh, so did anybody see the announcement that this was coming? Has anybody had a go at guessing what the five E's are? So let me know in the chat if you, um, you know, what you think they might be. So the five E's, five different types of E's of eating. So we all have to eat, right? It's a basic human need. But why do we eat? What are the different reasons we have for putting food into our bodies? Have you ever really stopped and looked at why you eat? Um, there are five different reasons that I came up with as to why we eat. And each one of them has a different effect on our body and mind um, or could be affected by our body and mind, should I say. And in tonight's video, I'm going to look to explore these a little bit with you and what they can mean. So I say, have you had a have you had a guess at what they are? So, again, let me know in the chat before I dive on in. Uh, so for lasting weight loss, I believe that these are helpful to know. Um, it's helpful for you to identify how you eat, when you eat, where you eat and why these different types of eating crop up for you. And so I'm going to run through those today. So as usual, if you want access to the show notes that go with this live, leave me a hashtag show notes and I will send you the link. Quick intro time, as usual, from me, for those who don't know me or who are new around these parts, I am Faye Casement. I am the creator of the AAA Way Weight Loss Programme, where I help women lose weight for good by ditching traditional dieting methods. And I do this by teaching my AAA women how they can craft their own unique and joyful weight loss journey. And I do that through a combination of intuitive eating and life coaching. Uh, so if you need any more information about that or how you can work with me drop me a message and uh, we'll have a chat so let's dive in so what are the five e's of eating let's see if you did guess them i'm a bit quiet in the chat but that's okay um but uh, let's go into the first one so the first e of eating is energy so energy is fuel for your body so this is the most obvious reason that we eat right you know it's how our bodies are designed and what it needs for survival we need food for energy to live to function um and so thinking of food as fuel for the body and how it keeps us going can be really helpful and so this is true eating. This is the type of eating that you want to be aiming for, for health and for weight loss. It is nourishing your body to maintain your energy levels throughout the day. Eating to keep the body physically going, to give it what it physically needs so that your body can serve whatever endeavours and purposes you have for your day. Um, ultimately, you know, my belief um, is that your body is designed to tell you what it needs. You know, we have nor nor hormones even I'm trying to blend with the next word hormones and neurotransmitters that send signals to our brain to let us know when we are hungry and um, what foods we're craving when we're full etc the problem is most days we've tended to lose touch of these signals a bit you know whether that be through years of dieting uh, other types of eating that will come on to other types of food behaviors and so we've lost those signals that were designed to give us the signs about when we were hungry and when we're satisfied and this is where the intuitive eating comes in so intuitive eating has a number of factors to it but one is eating when you are truly physically hungry so uh don't panic this doesn't mean eating when you are hangry or you've got you know um hunger pains or feeling sick or starving it's not about there's absolutely no restriction and starvation involved in intuitive eating but it's about when your body is just physically signaling that it's ready for phys physical sustenance uh, so you might be feeling a few growls of the stomach. You might be thinking I could eat um, and, because, and you check in and you haven't eaten for a while. Uh, your energy's perhaps dipped. You know, you might be getting a little bit of a headache because, again, it's not necessarily always what you would typically associate hunger to be. And so that's something that you can get in tune with again via intuitive eating. 
And the other part is stopping when you've had enough to sustain your body. Um, so intuitive eating is about treating your body with care. So rather than uh, excessive restriction or deprivation through elimination, it's about listening to your body, what it physically needs in terms of quantity and quality. So quality being nutrition of food. And to achieve weight loss, we play about with these in the membership. And that's how we find lasting success because you don't need any pills, potions, calorie counting, point counting, anything like that. So let me know in the chat on a scale of one to 10, with one being not at all and 10 being a hell yeah, do you think that you listen well to your hunger and satisfaction signals at the moment? Do you even give them a second thought? Is it something that you've even looked at or do you, you or do you just eat? That's what I would like to know. So uh, let me know in the chat. There is a bit of a delay. So uh, if anybody gets a chance to leave a message, I might come back to it. But uh, I'll, I'll carry on whilst uh, whilst the lag is catching up. So we have four more E's left. I have you guessed them, I wonder. So these are the ones that you really want to be aware of and work on if you're working on weight loss and to reduce overeating. So these are some of your potential saboteurs. So the first up is, can you guess it? Can you guess it? Ingrained eating. So ingrained eating is where it is based on habit rather than hunger. So it's the type of eating where you, you snack in front of the TV because that's just what you always do, or you eat because it's time for lunch, even if you're not hungry. It's the type of eating that can lead to weight gain as well as digestive issues and low energy levels as your body ultimately is trying to process something that it doesn't really need. And you've likely built up quite a few habits over the years. Um, and those need to be worked through one by one if you want lasting success in weight loss. So some of these rules and habits that you might have around food may serve you, some may not. So let me know in the chat what kind of habits you think you might have in and around food and eating. So I've come up with a few. So first up, I've got clock eating. So this is eating because the clock is telling you a certain time. So I used to be like Pavlov's dog or a set of dogs um, that, you know, when the clock struck nine, 12 or five, the bell would ring. I would salivate. I would I would then think that I was hungry, even even if I just ate. It didn't matter if the clock was saying that time, I would still want to eat. Um, eat in front of the TV or at the cinema. We, you know, whenever you go to the cinema, it's 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 habit to have popcorn. It's perhaps habit to have nachos and whatever else you know they've got going on in the cinema. Um, maybe it's a habit to pick off the off your partner or your kids' plates. Maybe you lick the cake batter bowl when you're making a cake. Cake, cake, a cake. Um, maybe you pick at food when you're cooking. Maybe you graze the fridge. Maybe you are so used to eating foods as meal deals, for example, so food combinations. Maybe you grab sweets as you walk by in reception or colleagues' desks. Or maybe um, special times of the years you tend to have habits or, or traditions that you do like Christmas, Easter and holidays. Maybe you've got a habit or a rule that you have to clean your plate because there's, you know, people in the world who don't have food, etc. Um, maybe you have a habit of overfilling your plate. You know, the, the plate sizes that we have. I mean, for starters, let's face it, when we were cave people, there were no plates. You just literally would have pulled off what you needed and you stopped when you when you were satisfied. Whereas now we've got plates that kind of suggest that they should be filled and that there shouldn't be any white space. So if you want to have real food freedom, you want to have a look at your food, food rules. Uh, some of these will serve you. Some of them will not serve you. And these will be beliefs that you've gathered over time and they will change the way that you will show up in life around food. And that can really impact your mindset in weight loss. Uh, so um, anything that is a rule starts with a sentence such as I must, I should, I'm supposed to. Um, and so it's likely after years of dieting that you'll be holding conflicting beliefs, which is why you can then end up with incessant mind chatter as a dieter and let's face it it can be pretty intense sometimes ladies um you know so for example you might think that you must eat breakfast even if you're not hungry because it starts your metabolism and then another day you might think okay now i'm not supposed to eat breakfast because someone said that fasting is better um maybe you've got a belief that you can't eat any processed food um 
processed food is bad. You mustn't eat it if you're trying to lose weight. Maybe you have a rule that you must get your 10,000 steps in a day. Maybe you have a rule that you have to exercise in order to lose weight, um, that you have to be 100% on your plan or it's broken. You you have fallen off the wagon. It's all kaput. Uh, you've got to eat your five portions of fruit and veg a day um, and that certain foods are bad. Now, I say some of those rules, they're not they're not bad things. It's not a bad thing to do 10,000 steps. Uh, it's not a bad thing to do some movement. But where they can hamper weight loss is when you start to should all over yourself. So if you beat yourself up because you don't achieve your 10,000 steps for a very genuine reason, that is something that you would want to look at and say, is that a rule? Am I, am I holding on to it too hard? Um, that doesn't mean to say that you give up. It's not that you don't try for 10,000 steps. It just means that you treat yourself with a bit of self-love and kindness. So if you are a AAA way woman uh, in, in do one of my members um, in the weekly roundup email, you've got a, an exercise to work yourself through this. Uh, so make sure that you check your emails. If you're not a member yet, why not join the membership um, and start knocking down these dominoes? These are the kind of things that we work on and work through as members and we work through it all together. So moving on to the next one. Let's see if yes, this one. So this next one is enforced so enforced eating so this isn't somebody just you know ramming food down your throat because hopefully that doesn't happen uh but it's the type of it's still the type of eating that's driven by an external factor such as work social event or family family obligations so it means when you're eating um and or feel compelled to eating some way um for something external to you um, so like I say, it often feels like you've got a sense of duty or a sense of responsibility. So, for example, you could be a food tester. It could be your job. I was talking to an amazing woman this week who um, does food testing and is setting up a business to help food entrepreneurs. Um, you know, and so therefore, you know, it could be food could actually be a job. You could be a chef. You may need to wine and dine clients as part of your job, but you might not be hungry at whining and dining time. Um, you might eat because it's somebody's birthday and there's cake or because you want to eat with your family, even though you're not hungry. I was um, literally just popped out very quickly before coming on and somebody was talking about your typical food pusher at work. So somebody would come around saying, do you want some cake? And she said, no, 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 I'm fine. Thank you. And they said, are you sure? Are you sure? And then they started wafting, wafting the cake smell at her. Um, so you have your food pushers. And again, you know, unless you've got, um, you know, got some strength and some boundaries about you there, then, you know, you may well give in to have that cake. You're going to feel obligated. You're going to feel like you should be saying yes to it. And the problem with this type of over with this type of eating is, again, it's an overeat. Ultimately, if you're eating when you're not hungry, it's overeating. So, again, some examples just to, um, you know, a bit of food for thought, pun totally intended. Uh, you know, evening meals with the family, socialising with friends, having eating windows due to work. So you might be a teacher or you might um drive for a living so therefore you can only eat during certain times which again you know are times it could lead to overeating because you're snaffling it all down quickly because you've, you've only got small windows to eat in for example you could work with food as i said you might have to wine or dine clients you've got food pushers you've got office treats family events and gatherings um or somebody's cooked or bought you a gift and you feel compelled to eat it so again, if you're watching this live or replay, let me know in the chat, you know, what kind of uh, enforced eating comes up for you? Um, how does that present itself in your life? It's really helpful to identify uh, when these things can come up for you and, you know, what your typical response is when that happens. Next one, uh, a biggie, and I will be definitely doing a live on this at some point, is eating for emotion. So that's the uh, the fourth one is emotion. So emotional eating is when we eat in response to our emotions, not because we're physically hungry. So, again, we're just turning to comfort for food, whether that be because we're sad, we're stressed, we're angry, we're bored. Um, 
it can even be because of desire, because you want it, because that cake looks good, because you've walked past a bakery and it smells good. Um, the problem with emotional eating, again, can be that you end up overeating. And also as well, there tends to be with all of these, um, when it's not for true physical hunger, is that feeling of guilt or shame after you've eaten. And that can then lead to further self-sabotage because then the thoughts come in about the fact that you've blown it, you've gone off track. Well, if I've done that, I might as well eat this. And so, again, being aware of when, when, why and how emotional eating comes up for you. And the key then is to solve the emotion, not to solve the eating. If you solve the emotion, the eating will follow. So this is why weight loss is so much more than just about what you eat and how you move. So examples of emotional eating, overeating dinner or grabbing a takeout after a bad day at work, eating when you're bored in front of the TV, using food as a re as a reward or drink as a reward. You know, I deserve this. I've had a bad day at work. I deserve this drink. Using food to numb out. So again, sometimes the, you, you might eat because um, you don't want to have the thoughts and feelings that you've got going on. Maybe you've had an argument with your partner or the kids. Or maybe you're a procrastinator snacker. So I used to be a procrastinator snacker uh, if I didn't want to do a particular task because I have uh, one of my saboteurs is that I will avoid things that I don't want to do. And so why not go and grab a snack was the old me. Um, whereas once I became aware of that, I was able to put action steps in place that solved that. And the final E of eating is empty eating. So it's this is just pure mindless eating. You've zoned out and you've gone so far, you don't even know that you're eating anymore. Uh, so you could hear it called fog eating, but I just wanted to make them all ease, basically. Um, and it could happen for any of those other reasons. It could happen for emotion. It could happen because it feels enforced. And so, again, you're just zoning out or it's just pure habit and you're just grabbing um emotion probably is still the biggest one and sort of numbing out on food is more likely to be empty eating so a couple of those though that would be that could be again because you're driving you're not really thinking about it you're just picking up the picking up the sweets again a habit of mine was definitely eating and driving if I was going on a long journey I'd want to get some snacks for the journey regardless of whether I was hungry or not and again you'd just be just be doing this and not really thinking about it Another time it can happen as well as if you have like a grab bag of a bag, grab bag of crisps or something like that. So, again, you just you're just eating because the portions are just it's just there and it's available. Um, another form of um, empty eating could be that you are literally just snaffling after a busy day at work um, or mindlessly snacking at work. Again, if there's uh, treats available uh, and so no surprises here. That type of food and eating can lead to weight gain as you're consuming food that you don't need again. And ultimately, you're aware, not even aware sometimes that you're eating. So like I say, empty eating, it's when you're distracted, you're perhaps on the go and you're just eating mindlessly without any true physical need or intent. So why is it important to know and work on the ease of eating? Well, as I said already, the biggest problem with the four E's, um, the four last E's and the four reasons of eating is that ultimately it is overeating and that is likely to be sabotaging your weight loss journey. Um, the other the other reason is, is that it could be confusing your body. You know, your body is physically designed scientifically to self-regulate. It's not it wasn't designed when we were cavemen and women um, to have this stimuli, stimuli from the modern world. You know, they didn't, cave people didn't have busy meetings, TVs, a huge range of emotions or the need to numb out. They just knew that they needed to eat to survive, to, you know, avoid the tigers, basically. And so when we eat for anything other than energy, um, when um, our body doesn't need it, the body and mind is going to get confused because the body is waiting for the, the the hormones to fire. So again, we have a hormone that tells us when we're hungry and we have a hormone that tells us when we are satisfied. And if you are doing any other type of eating, then it's confused, which can lead to hormone misfiring as well. And our body is just constantly going through some kind of energy exchange it's just trying to balance the chemicals in our body and the hormones in our body and so if you send it something it doesn't need um then 
uh, or you don't give it something that it's wanting because it, you're restricting, it's going to get very confused. And again, you're going to end up with all these misfires. And now, you know, this happens. Of course it does. You are and you are only human. Of course, you're going to have times where you don't eat when you were hungry and you, you, you know, you overeat when you when you when you were already past satisfied. Of course you are. But the point of my weight loss program is is that we try and minimalize that through working on our habits um and getting to know uh, our routines and what we do in these these types of eating that we do basically and you start to tune in a lot more to your mind body and soul as well so uh and the soul side of it i i do wonder when i say soul is everybody like oh it's a bit woo um but ultimately that is just about looking to try and find your joy in the process um and and looking to find peace throughout this journey because weight loss can be uh if you're just purely working on the ins and outs so you know what you can eat and not eat and you've got lots of judgment around that it's not a peaceful process it's not a nice process to be in whereas actually it doesn't have to be like that it can be a lot easier so let's say learning more about uh you know how you eat why you eat uh when you eat uh and becoming more intuitive about that is where you can then look to find lasting success in weight loss because you're moving back towards a more natural way of eating ultimately and it will also help you as well uh, because you'll become more present in your life, which ultimately can lead to you making better choices for yourself overall. And so that is um, that is one of the reasons why you want to get used to or get to know these types of eating and look to work on them intuitively and through problem solving and life coaching. So quick recap to finalise. So I say when you understand your eating habits and how they can impact your overeating, it becomes a lot easier to make wiser choices for yourself. The five E's of eating are important to consider when you're trying to lose weight because they can lead to confusion and misfiring in the body, which then can lead to an unhealthy relationship with food. And I would hope that none of you want that. Um, so that's it basically for this evening i hope that you found this uh video helpful if you did again please give it a thumbs up uh keep watching every week thanks for listening and don't forget if you want to boost your life and weight loss the AAA way check out the relevant links for today's show in the description speak soon